Hey, this is Brock Lemires, and we're continuing our study of embedded systems design. We are looking at interrupts, and it's time to finally look at a specific interrupt of a peripheral on our MSP430. And this will allow us the opportunity to kind of see how all the conceptual understanding of interrupts applies to a real interrupt. And we will start with probably the most simplest interrupt system on the microcontroller, which is the port interrupts, okay? <clears throat> so it turns out that every bit of every port on the MSP430, you know, MCU we're using can actually trigger an interrupt. And it's it triggers an interrupt when a, there's a transition on an input. Now, I'm telling you this, but you got to also wonder, like, how did I figure this out? Like, how, <clears throat> how do, would I know, where would I go to learn about if or not there is interrupts on a port? And the answer is, let's take a minute and review kind of our documentation. So the MSP430 FR4 or FR user's guide, this is the monster data sheet. This gives you all the information about the, the operation of the peripherals and all the configuration registers. And this is where you figure out when you're learning about a peripheral, whether or not it can do certain things. One of them being, can it generate an interrupt? And if so, how? So if I open this thing and I come over here to the left, I look at kind of my, you know, the table of contents over here, the bookmarks. If I go down to digital IO, I'm gonna be able to click on this and it'll talk about how this operates. So I look at this and it's, oh, digital IO, independently operatable, oh, configurable P1, P2 interrupts. <clears throat> so I read through this and I figure out, oh, geez, there, this has the ability to configure interrupts. And then you're like, well, I wanna learn which registers I need to alter in order to set it up. Well, there's the ones that we've seen before. So the input register, PXN, PXOUT, PXDIR, and PXREN. But then as you scroll down, you start seeing a section on interrupts. And so you start learn, you read through all this and it gives you a lot more details than you might wanna know, but it gets down to <clears throat> some of the configuration registers. And there's ones that we recognize. So for example, interrupt enable, right? PXIE, I understand that one, right? So that's the local interrupt enable, that makes sense. But it's also got some other things like interrupt edge select register. I don't know what that is, so I need to read a little bit about that. <clears throat> Turns out that's the only one. Uh, but then it's like, there should be a flag register probably somewhere else. So then you keep going through here. And if I wanted just a quick overview of all the registers that, that this peripheral has, I come over here and I look at digital IO registers and I can actually get a quick table of all the ones that are associated with this peripheral. So you have port one interrupt vector. <clears throat> this is that P1 IV or the, well, well, we'll learn about that. But you see you got port in, in out direction, resistor enable, function select. Then you got some interrupt edge select, interrupt enable, interrupt flag. So all the usual suspects are here. <clears throat> now, which of these are implemented on our own specific MCU? For that, I need to go over here to my device specific data sheet. So the monster data sheet is where I learn about how it works in general and all the configuration registers. When I wanna know where these things come out on the MCU, I go to the device specific data sheet. And so if I come over here and I go down to detailed description, if I scroll down, I'm gonna see this header called, uh, this bookmark called peripherals. And you come into here and you'll actually see this thing called general purpose input out, input output. And this is where you say, okay, on our MCU, so this is the MSP430 FR2355, it says up to 44 IO ports are implemented. I already knew that. <clears throat> it, it says they're all, you know, 8-bit, 8-bit, 5-bit, 7-bit. All right, that's cool. But here's what I'm really interested in. Any combination of input-output is possible for these interrupt conditions possible in P1, P2, P3, and P4. So I'm like, wow, I can generate an interrupt on any one of these, that's kind of cool. Uh, edge selectable interrupt, uh, that's pretty cool too. Uh, that's neat. And so this is where you get the real specifics of the actual, <clears throat> you know, the actual pin operation where they are and what is actually implemented on our MCU. And then of course, you know, you go, well, how can I access these pins? And then that's where you go to the launch pad board. For the ports, this is really easy or it's really nice because they actually put silkscreen labels on here. So if I know that any port can 
port bit can generate an interrupt. I just need to know where it is. <clears throat> and so I noticed that I have all these port bits that are on these pin headers. I remember that my switches were on port four bit one and port two bit three. So I can use interrupts to read from the switches. I could use interrupts to, <clears throat> I don't know, there's an output right here. I could do stuff with that. But so that gives me kind of an overview of like where I find all the information. Now in this video, I'm gonna summarize this for you, but I didn't, you know, you, you will learn that what I show in the videos and, and I put in the book, it's basically just an overview of the basics. <clears throat> There's a lot more functionality within the MCU that I can't cover because it just would take forever. And so the whole point is I want to give you the overview, give you the basic, get you started, and then let you know that there's probably more complicated things that you can do with any of these peripherals, and you just need to go into the right data sheet to learn about it. So let's start with the basics of a port interrupt, okay? It, if you configure it as an input, if there's a transition on the pin, it will set a flag, okay? Each and every bit within a port will do that, okay? <clears throat> they all share the same vector for each port. So port one has an interrupt vector, port two has an interrupt vector, port three, and port four. And so what that means is that if you had two bits within a port, okay, so let's say you did port four bit one, and then you came over here and you said, I also want port, port four bit four to each have their interrupts enabled. I would, if one of them, one or the other occurred, they're gonna go to the same interrupt service routine because they share the same vector. That means you have to put logic in your interrupt service routine to determine, hey, which one of these caused the interrupt? And it's, a, it's as simple as checking the flag, but there's also an automatic way to do it. We're gonna probably do it really simple where we, we don't necessarily, for, the, for these examples, need to determine, we'll just do one bit examples, okay? But just be aware, that's how they work. Okay. How do you do the local enable? There is a register called port, P, port interrupt enable, PXIE. The syntax here is this is what you see in the monster data sheet. The X means it's a number. So you would plug into it P1IE for port one, P2IE for port two, port, you know, P4IE for, for port four. But if they listed every one of those out in the data sheet, it would take so many pages, more than the 600 plus it already takes. So this is kind of the abbreviation to cover a generic description of all the ports. The way that this works is these are all bitwise configuration. So what that means is if you came down here and you said any bit in here, if it's a zero, the interrupt is disabled. If it's a one, it's enabled. But this is going to be an eight bit register. And so the way that you do it is you say, if I want to enable port or bit zero of the port, I go to bit zero of this interrupt enable register. If I want to enable bit seven, I go and I set bit seven of this register. So that's how all of these configuration registers work is they're all bitwise, okay? Now, upon reset, PXIE is cleared. That means when you fire up the MCU, these port interrupts are not enabled. You, and that's what you would suspect. But you have to go enable each one that you want to use. And you, you're going to do it bit by bit. If you want to, you know, usually don't use every single port bit, but you're just going to say, well, here's port four bit one. That's connected to switch one. I'm going to enable that by going to, the syntax would be P4IE, and then you would go set bit position one, of that register and that would do the local enable for this little fella right there, okay? These are all maskable. That means that even though I, even though you enable the local interrupt, you have to also go set the GIE bit in the status register. So that's where you use the instruction EINT. But remember, then that allows maskable interrupts and then the local tells it, hey, this specific peripheral this actual flag right here is now going to be potentially asserted when there's an event. Okay, your flag, PXIFG. <clears throat> this is the port interrupt flag. And once again, you'll see that syntax, PXIFG. The X can take on one, two, three, or four, the corresponding to the four ports. And again, it's a bitwise configuration register. That means if it's zero, the flag is unasserted. If it's a one, the flag is asserted. So when you look at this, 
it's going to be zero upon reset. And if let's say port four bit one was asserted, the flag went off, so an event triggered, you would see bit position one in port four IFG be asserted. So that's how you're able to see which of the individual bits caused the interrupt, okay? Now, this is also super important. Once this flag is set, so let's say that I set up something to trigger an interrupt whenever you press S1, it's going to set the flag in port four, bit position one of this register. You have to write an interrupt service routine to, to do something when that happens, but you also then have to clear the flag in the interrupt service routine. Okay, if you don't, it will continually trigger and you'll be stuck in an infinite loop. Okay, one of the things that the MSP430 gives you is it's this other configuration register, status register, and it's they're trying to help you figure out which bit triggered the interrupt in the case that you had multiple bits that fired at the same time or fired within before they could be serviced. And so they provide this thing called the interrupt vector word. So it's PXIV. And what it does is it, it says, okay, I'm only gonna, I'm gonna have a unique code in this register when I see an interrupt. And it's gonna correspond to which bit caused the interrupt. And the way that it does it is it says, okay, I'm only gonna hold one value and I will prioritize the bits. And so what it does is it says, okay, the highest priority is, you know, let's say the highest priority is bit zero, it'll have a value of zero two. And if bit one was the one that triggered, it'd have zero four. And bit two would be, have zero six, and bit three would have zero eight, et cetera, et cetera. And it'll only hold this value for whatever the highest priority bit was that caused it. Now, we don't, we're not gonna use this, okay? <laughs> because we're gonna just do real, you know, you can accomplish the same thing by just checking the flags. But this is if you, I don't know, they use this throughout a lot to try to figure out, you know, a lot of times you'll have like two or three things that happen at once. So you got all these different flags that are set and you go to one service routine. You can use this to say, I'm going to, I'm going to service these one at a time, you know, in, I'll execute the first interrupt service routine. Then I'll come back and do the second one, you know, do the second chunk of code and then the third chunk of code. And you can use this to figure out which chunk of code you're going to execute. What's interesting about this register, and you'll start seeing this with, with configuration registers, is if you read from it, it will actually clear the register. So it's got this really handy notion that when you have this in your interrupt service routine, you go, I'm gonna go check what value's in here. When you check it, it clears it, okay? Like I say, this is provided to you to make your life easier. You don't need to use it. You can just check the flags, and if you, only have one bit enabled of a port, you don't need to check because you already know which bit caused it, okay? Now, <clears throat> here is an interesting thing. We said that the, you can trigger an interrupt on a port when there's an input transition, but you also have the ability to tell it which transition will cause it. So there's a configuration register called the port interrupt edge. EXIES, and if it's a zero in a particular bit, then a low to high transition will cause the interrupt. If it's a one, it, a high to low transition will cause the interrupt. So this is something that allows you to say for a particular you know, switch, you know, think about the way that this switch works. It's when you press it, what does it do? Does it go low to high or high to low? So you need to look at the circuit for the switch and figure out what happens uh, when it when you press it and then set the sensitivity accordingly. So that's a description of, of all the configuration registers. Here's what you're gonna see when you go into the data sheets. You're gonna see tables that kind of look like this. It's a summary, right? So here's your port X interrupt enable register. And it's got each bit in here and you see kind of a, a basically a description of what each bit value means. So in this situation, zero means that the local enable is, is disabled, a one mean it's, means it's enabled. This is so you get used to looking at these tables like this in the data sheet. But what's really interesting on these is what is the value after reset? So when I come out of reset, all the local enables for this port interrupt system are disabled, okay? 
When I come out of reset, all the flags in PXIF, IFG, they're also at zero. That means none of them are pending. So you could use that to your advantage. You could say, I don't need to clear the flag the first time I boot up, uh, but it's also good practice to do that just so you know that it's specifically there. Okay, same thing with the uh, edge select register. On reset, it comes in as all zeros. That means the default sensitivity is low to high transitions. And then if you want to low to, or high to low transition, you need to go set a bit corresponding to the bit to port bit you're using. And then here's this thing right here, this uh, vector, interrupt vector. And it's, again, here's the priority. So bit zero is the highest priority. Bit three is, you know, lower. Bit seven is the lowest. And just this is, in this form, you can kind of see like, for example, let's say that bit position one and two both fired at the same time, okay? And you go out and you're like, what is the value that you're gonna see in this PXIV register? It's gonna be the higher priority. So that means that zero four would be in this register. And you would have to accept its prioritization of the bits if you wanted to use that. Uh, for ports, I, it, it, isn't really, it doesn't really make sense, but some of the other peripherals it does. But what happens is that you would check this and say, oh, it's zero four, I've got this guy is bit one triggered this, it's flag is set. So then you do some code in your service routine to handle that. When you read it, it cleared it and reset it to its next value, which is zero six. So then you come back again and then you would handle zero six. Okay, so that is a general overview of the port interrupt system. And at this point, we know all we need to know to actually do an example program, which we will do next. As always, remember to support my channel by subscribing and see.